the one bird everyone wants to see is the eating. Every time I see it, I cannot get enough of it. Red, crimson, bright crimson bird with a long, decurved bill. Uh, the call is just captivating, and uh, when you see it feeding on a flower and then goes to the next one and does the same thing, you can watch it all day. It, uh, it's really nice to see. So Ani Ani Owl is our smallest kawaii forest bird. They weigh, if you put four pennies in your hand or ten paper clips in your hand, that's what an Ani Ani Owl weighs, like eight or nine grams. So they're bright lemon drop yellow. Yeah. They're adorable. The Hawaiian Islands were colonized by birds, plants, and insects. And that was what was here for millions and millions of years. And there's only three ways things arrive in Hawaii because of the isolation of Hawaii. One is the wind, one is the waves, and one is the water. So you're either a strong flyer, you get blown here in the wind, or you're a strong swimmer. That means a lot of things didn't get here. No mammals, no reptiles. So the forest birds likely came here on the wind, blown off course on the wind. And it was likely the, an the ancestor to one of the main forest bird families here in Kauai was a rosy finch, a, like your house finch that you see around your houses anywhere in the North America. And it just got blown off course in a, in a big storm, arrived here and had these uninhabited islands to e explore and explode into. And because there were so many different niches, here in the Hawaiian Islands that weren't being occupied by anything else, that one species turned into 50 different species, more than 50 different species of honeycreeper with all sorts of different beak types and colors and sizes that filled all these different niches. So some of them picked fruit and some of them ate insects and some of them ate seeds. Some of them do what woodpeckers do on the, on the mainland. And they, they just exploded, that's what we call an adaptive radiation. Captain Cook did say when he arrived, he found natives on the seashore carrying the eevees all hooked together in a, in a string with their bills, and, you know, for the feathers. They, those feathers were so precious to them. Like you say, in a, in a place with no precious metals, um, that was their currency or that was valuable. They were guys whose job, specific job was to catch these birds and use the feathers to make el elaborate capes and helmets. So during that time, there were no mosquitoes here on, in the Hawaiian Islands. And the birds have very low immunity or high susceptibility to mosquito-borne diseases like avian malaria. And so later, when mosquitoes came to Hawaii and became a vector for these diseases, the birds started dropping like flies, basically. So avian malaria itself was not introduced until the 1950s. And ever since then, what we've been seeing is a retreat of the forest birds to the highest elevations of the Hawaiian Islands where the temperatures are so cool that mosquitoes don't breed most of the year. What we're seeing, however, is under climate change, the elevations at which formerly things were cold enough to prevent those life cycles from happening are now getting warmer and warmer. And so on a relatively short island like Kauai, we no longer have those really cold elevations anymore. Luckily on higher elevation islands like Maui and the Big Island, they still have sufficient elevational profiles that the forest birds are doing much better there because they can move up and escape this mosquito, this advancing mosquito zone. We must save these birds. They have ecosystem relevance. So the fruit-eating birds are the birds that dis disperse the, the seeds that will become the next trees. They keep the forest going. And the insect-eating birds are those that control insect populations and make sure the trees can be healthy. And the forest can't function without the birds. 
we have created these problems. It's our kuleana to address these problems. We must.